Last Cast. I'm Austin Manoic. And I'm Landon Albertson. Just a couple average bros trying to be above average, trying to fill that freezer and make a little less wall space. But in the end, it's all about the adventure. Here's a uh, cast here. This one's going to be a little bit shorter than than uh, normal, but I like mm-hmm. I think 30 minutes to an hour is, is pretty solid. Yeah. You know, unless we've got like a guest or somebody that we're really trying to get the juice, trying to fuck, <laughs> extract the juice from their brain uh-huh. on uh, what makes them Alaskan. Yeah. Um, are successful for that matter in Alaska. Uh, but uh, here's my dog again in the second <laughs> cast trying to... He's trying to steal the show? Yeah, he's trying to steal the show. <laughs> and I don't know how these will go. I don't know if we're going to play one, two, three, or four. What's going to go first? It's kind of like we'll figure it out as we go. But I'd like to get uh, you know five or six of them down and then start to publish them out. So if you're if you're digging it, you can... Netflix it, you know, you can binge watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, or like our YouTube channels, like speaking of which, uh, it's a little segue there. Yeah, like um, a lot of people I find out when they watch one, they will go back and they'll binge watch all of my films. Uh-huh. And so they'll get to the beginning and they're like, man, some of your first stuff, but <laughs> 10 years ago, that was rough. I'm like, <laughs> thanks. Now I'm like, oh, what should I do? Should I just go ahead and make those private? I can yeah. just take those down. You no, know? man, it makes you who you are. Yeah, right? I, I even like going back and seeing how much I progressed in like the editing process or or the different shots, you know? Mm-hmm. Just kind of see where you started. I think that's important. Right. You know? And uh, I don't know, like I've had cameras that have been above my editing capability. Like I've had a high frame rate and then like it got drowned in a river or it fell off a mountain. And I've been able to keep up with a lot of the the style of everybody else. I and mean, you see a lot of films like, wow, they're filming with something that's pretty epic. You know, what, what, what are they filming with? They film with a red, what are they doing? It's like, no, that's just an iPhone turned sideways on slow-mo, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, okay, yeah. that's what they were doing. They make um, those iPhones good now. You oh, get, get, yeah. <laughs> shoot a lot of good footage of this. <laughs> Turn it sideways, you know, it's 4K. You want it to be. Um, so it's, you know, man, that was epic. Yeah, it was shot from an iPhone. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, cool. Right on. Uh-huh. Um, so that's the, the whole thing with YouTube now and, and looking at all these films, trying to keep up. It's like, well, who cares about keeping up? Like, I've got a style. I like music. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Jones into it, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, I just released, with your help, Unseen Hours. You know, it's a it's a doll sheet film with um, Brian Turner and uh, me shooting. We each shot beautiful sheep, but it wasn't about look at me, look at our ego, look at us. You know, killing sheep in a super cup. Like the backstory of he was he took somebody out in that airplane the year before, and um, you know he got some car bites or something happened on the landing, and he didn't have the power when he needed it and he put the plan in the broccoli and, and crumpled it up and spent the whole year putting it back together right when i really didn't have that much time with my child because like my wife's pregnant and i'm pulling weight around the house you know like there's all there's all these unseen hours that go into like success mm-hmm. like, overarching success of of any hunt like as you know you know mm-hmm. you've got you've got a couple of boys and a wife you're like all right I take them with or how am I going to manage this when I leave? There's just all these um, unseen hours that go in to a successful hunt. So I just published that. And um, with your help, some of the music choices, you're like, Hey, I think you should do this, cut that. Like I like the music, but a little bit less of it, a little more of this mm-hmm. um, in suspense. So both have our own style, which is, okay. which is cool. Mm-hmm. And um, it's important not to take your, yourself too serious. So I think they're great, you know. Mm-hmm. What we what we've got going on is cool, and I can uh, I can relate to it because we self film everything, right? Mm-hmm. You know, um, and it's a lot different even like having a cameraman in the field. Like I've, I've kind of been on both spectrums, mm-hmm. but I like it when I hunt and I'm kind of in control of my own destiny of what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I'd rather just take a camera and set it up and try to film it versus have somebody oh i've i've had people that film my my dad filmed my first moose hunt and it was a little <laughs> a little shaky a little sasquatchy but <laughs> sasquatchy <laughs> what was that was that a deer is that a moose is it a pair uh, but he did his best and i mean you kind of got to work with what you got when you put it in somebody else's hands that's not used to filming you know right um my wife is 
does a very good job filming also. Mm -hmm. And she's kind of got a good artistic feel of what, what good shots are. And that's, that's helpful too. It helps to get different perspectives of things. People see different or things differently, mm -hmm. you know, um, even when we do our editing and stuff, we could, I bet if I got your footage, you got my footage and we told the same story, it would have a different feel, a different look. And it's kind of just what people see through their eyes, you know? Right. So soul hunter and I've been doing some uh, work together and like, he's one of my mentors. Like I look up to him. Mm -hmm. I was watching his stuff in college. I'm like, man, I want to do that, you know? Um, and he'll, he like uh, special places the film that I did. Uh, he edited a version. And I'm like, well, hey, can I publish that on mine? He's like, yeah, it doesn't really work that way because copyright. So if you're doing things like even if you have two different cameras and you're filming two different ways, if you have one media, there's going to be a copyright. You won't be able to publish it. You know, YouTube they use it. Okay, so I edited it, my version of it, and published it on my YouTube page because he used it for Amazon Prime and. And he syndicated down um, and, and played it across his channels. I mean, obviously, he's got the audience. He's got the people that watch, which is really awesome. And I look at mine and look at his. I'm like, man, this is so much better. You know, you just told the story. It's the same story, but the music and how you build suspense. You, you stop it here, end it there, extend here, do this. Like, whoa, okay. Editing really makes a, a big difference as far as the, the final product. So mm -hmm. it all kind of goes into style. What's your style, man? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's cool. Soul Hunter's got some really good stuff. Um, been working uh, with him. So he'll syndicate some of my films and I'll send it to him. And, you know, he's, man, Soul, he's got the Soul juice. Hunter Tim, Tim Burnett. Yeah, Tim Burnett. So right. Soul Hunter Media. Mm -hmm. So now Soul Hunter Media, which is cool. Um, so he's, he's syndicating, making playlists. I think that's what we might do with this. Alaskast is, is syndicated underneath Mission Alaska. Uh, because we've got some followers, but Prairie Adventure has followers as well. Um, so how do we do that and, and maximize the message for mm -hmm. the people that are already there? Because sometimes you, you you miss it. You're like, how have I missed this profile? This person's been around for the last four years doing awesome stuff. How did I miss that? You know, mm -hmm. just to, you know, like like me, like a nobody, you know, Mission Alaska. Oh, you're Mission Alaska? Let me see your profile. Like, oh, whoa, Okay. How did I miss that? You know, I don't know the algorithms or what happens, but um, it's cool. I mean, you could play the same stuff on your channel as it is on mine, and we're going to hit completely different people. Yeah. And it's weird how all that stuff works. You know, I, when you publish something, some people will see it, some won't. Oh my head! Yeah. <laughs> oh my head! Um, but it's it's just fun making films. Like even if you're if you're trying to do it for the outdoor industry, trying to make mm -hmm. it. Or if you're just doing it because you enjoy doing it. And I think that's, I just really like editing. I like filming. Mm -hmm. And I think filming a hunt just adds adds a little extra layer to it. You know, mm -hmm. like what, before I started filming hunts, yeah, I was just going out there, doing the hunting, shooting, killing, putting it in the freezer. Now it's like almost making an art out of it. Like I want to tell my story, you know, other than going back and, seeing all your buddies telling tell Joe this, him this, you know. Now you now you get to tell your story through film, and it just adds that extra layer. And how do you keep it spicy, man? So, like, I've, I've done some archery hunting. Like, um, I love traditional archery, but Alaska, traditional archery is really tough. you got to be willing to go and spend money and do a lot and not be successful. So, um, man, I've hunted with compound bow. I've taken critters with bow component, but I hunt with a rifle a lot and going out now when i go hunting usually it's it's if i have the right window and i time everything right and i have a, a schedule where it's like hey can i shift this can i do this with, with child care and before i didn't have to worry about that but i go out and make this happen with a weather window and i know it's gonna happen because if you get to the mountains you can't see anything you're just you're spinning your wheels man it's a, it's a waste of time um but uh with the rifle it's like adding that self-filming in and filming it you got to get the kill shot twice and there's a challenge there. And then you got our trade and you try to add that in other than just like a GoPro. Mm -hmm. um, it's like this whole other layer. Like it's, a, it's an added challenge and what it really means to you to do the hunt a certain way. Um, and obviously archery is just over the top difficult, especially in Alaska, especially traditional archery. It's very tough. Mm -hmm. But there's a few bad boys in the state of Alaska that 
um, like I said, kind of just keep it in check. Like there's some guys that are out there doing some incredible things with proof, stick, and strength. You know, mm-hmm. uh, my father-in-law included. He's he's gone on a on a drought for a while, but um, that's because he usually hunts with me, and I got a rifle, and it's like. Hey, well, what are we going to do? It's day seven. You know, well, shoot it. You know, never spend the last three days hunting, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, packing instead of hunting. You're like, okay, well, we got one. Cool. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm glad I got meat. You know, he's like, it's just him and his, so he's not feeding a family anymore. Mm-hmm. So what, what, you know, what are you doing it for? How are you doing it? Um, I, I really enjoy rifle hunting. Um, it just, it makes it a lot easier for filming and hunting. You get it within 300 yards and then, down to 200 it's it's much easier but bow hunting starts where the rifle hunting ends you know um so that's interesting you know like I'm looking at this muskox here it's uh it's um it's about time for muskox like it's going to open or it is just opened i believe I think my permit opened in february i can't remember but remember it closed in it's March. right sometime. right there yeah so right at so the permits come out and you draw the permit February 15th, and then you hook the fall of the year. It's not okay. like, oh, I drew a permit. So, so you draw 2019. That means you're hunting February 2020. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so I drew this tag uh, 2018. This will be the next short film that I do or film. I don't know how long it's going to be. Um, but that was just like an incredible adventure. And I, I, I hunted with a reeker, right? Like I went down to Big Jim's bow company, which I do some work with Big Jim, but I went down there and built this bow with him and um you know he picked out some woods he's like you're going this is this uh, is what you're getting a recurve or a long a desert okay. bighorn okay. so it's, it's actually an arctic bighorn okay it's kind of cool you know <laughs> gotcha. it's got a uh, california buckeye burl and he he spalted it and stained it with blue and we sanded it down there's a little bit of blue in it so it's like an aurora borealis bow and it's just like it is it's got doll sheep um limb tips and it's just beautiful. I got to be a part of it. It was really cool uh, mm-hmm. to, to be a part of it. Um, but that's, that's, what's coming up. That's a, you know, that was an archery hunt. Um, I'll hunt bears over bait with uh, archery and I hunted this musk ox with archery, you know, bears with bait are coming in and mm-hmm. it's 15 yard shot musk ox, you know, they, they don't. Uh, so, so tell me a little bit, if you want to dive into, tell me a little bit about what it takes to do a musk ox hunt. Like what's or how how was that story? So the muskox hunt, it's it's kind of like an anticlimactic hunt. Like I kind of, I mean, I I went there, but I also I, I kind of felt bad when I got up and finally I'm like, okay, this is what I've heard muskox are. This is this is how this is how it goes. Like their natural defense is to circle up, protect their young, put their young in the middle, and fight off the wolves. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, just make a barrier so they don't run. Really, I mean, they might do a run if they if you they spot you from miles away. They'll do a little run and stop. You walk right up to them, you know. So I shot it with a bow. Could have shot it with a rifle, but it was like anticlimactic and um, in a sense. And I feel like a lot of hunters on that hunt, that draw that hunt, miss the whole hunt. Just miss ninety percent of the hunt. It's not really about uh, the killing of the animal. It's more of a harvest of the animal. Um, so you so you fly it down. So this is on Nunavak. I do the Nunavak tag. You I put in for the last twelve years. You got like one percent chance to draw it. Mm-hmm. Less than one percent chance. Finally, I drew it. For twelve years. Yep, I'm doing it. And um, I got a call immediately when the draws come out. They they actually told me from Derek Blake and Ruby Mayflower. Derek Blake said, "Hey, Ruby, drew the tag. We're going together." I've already called James Whitman. I went with James, you know, he's the same one. Rinella went with him. You know, he's okay. Yeah, I call him James Weatherman Whitman because he sits there. He doesn't go out very much anymore, but he just looks at the weather because it's like, it's nasty. It's just like, when you don't have visibility, you can go out and just keep riding. Like, where are we? You know, you Mm -hmm. get GPSs and whatnot, but it's, you can't see the muskox and basically it's, it's, it's a weather timetable. So you could go there and go out and, Go kill them one day, or you can sit there and get weathered like we did. We went out, shot one the next day, and then we sat there for four days. And then I'm like, I'm you, just, you just stay at the uh, yeah. at Jim's house. Yeah, James, James is uh, or James. James. Yeah, we stay at James's house, and um, it's in Nunavak and in in a Macquarieuk in a native village, right? So um, that's what I'm saying. People go fly into the airport. It's frigid. You bundled up you get a snow machine there you're there and then people stay in the they stay in the house 
watching movies or whatever, go out, go kill their musk ox and try to get out as quick as possible, right? Mm -hmm. So like, I, I'm thankful that we got some weather days there because um, I had been to the village one time before and they remembered me from a different show. We mm -hmm. weren't hunting musk ox, um, but um, yeah, that was eons ago, eight years ago or something like that, maybe seven, I don't know, terrible memory. Um, so you've been down there? But I've been down there before and they remembered me with my bow. I was there doing a show and I had a you know long bow that I hoped and... Mm -hmm. But we were hunting musk ox, so at any rate, it's the second time I was there, and at night in Koryuk, they've got volleyball, like the community gets together, I think there's like less than 200 people there, right, and then you've got all ages from, you know, kids to um, elders there in the gym, and they're playing volleyball, you know, mm -hmm. with a volleyball that's deflating, and you gotta stop every five <laughs> minutes, and, and you know, pump it back up, and you keep going, like, that's a reminder, actually, I need to send them, I'm gonna send them out a volleyball, like a brand new volleyball. That's a good idea. Because one girl had the volleyball, and like, she, yeah, I'm taking this home because they don't have. They've got basketball, they don't have a bunch of volleyball. So like, <laughs> she's the kid that took her ball home. Huh? <laughs> she took her ball home, and she's done. You know, uh, that's, really, yeah. that's funny. Yeah, so send them some. a lot of people, a lot of hunters, go there. They sit in, they get their food, they sit there, and they wait to go out and go kill the muskox and leave. They don't walk out, go to Adam's store. They don't go out to the post office. They're not going to the store, like the Nunavak store. Um, not going and playing volleyball. And which is which is the whole experience. That's the whole experience. You're hanging out with them, and like I brought muskox shirts. I don't have one on. Should, should put that on. Um, but I brought them out, and I was like, hey, you know, I've got some. You know, whoever wins tonight gets you know MVP gets a, a volleyball shirt. And there was a gal there, um, a younger gal, a sweet gal, and she's like, I want one. I'm like, well, okay, I brought two. You get to pick the winner though. She okay, and I gave her the shirt, and then <laughs> one one of the other. The, a gal that was playing like an elder looked over as we were discussing it. And I was like, hey, somebody's going to win this tonight. The elder looked over like at her daughter or her, uh, their friends, right? And she's like, that's mine. And everyone was like, oh, okay. <laughs> she just called it. That's mine. Dude, like, you're like, all right. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I go out and I play volleyball. And then, uh, like, I didn't go one night because we were slicing and dicing musk ox. And they were like, why didn't you come last night? You know, like, mm -hmm. because I was busy cutting meat, they're like, you come tomorrow. Like, okay, <laughs> I promise. Like, I play volleyball with him, like, I was looking forward to it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go and play volleyball. And so that was fun, like, just really enjoyed my time there and going to Adam's store, renting movies, and we were watching movies. And I mean, I haven't even seen this movie. This movie is sweet. Mm -hmm. um, There's a couple, like, I don't know, I, we watched the, the Star Wars movie, a couple other movies. I can't even remember the name of it, but it was like a, Star Wars esque movie, mm -hmm. and um, man, it was just awesome. Watch, watch like Deadpool, Deadpool two, mm -hmm. and like the father. You know, you, you go in. They've got a living room, which is the kitchen as well, and then two bedrooms and one bathroom. And you've got eight to ten people that are in there. So everyone's crashed out on a couch or on the floor on a gym pad, on bunk beds. You know, just staying cozy. Frigid mm -hmm. temperatures, just early. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I'm like, hey, you know, it's 10 o'clock and the kids are there. I'm like, well, we're going to play a movie, but I don't think, is this okay? You know, like, are they going to play? Or what, what do we do here? And um, maybe we'll just watch it another time. And he's like, he's like, oh, no, I've seen it twice. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, all right. Okay. So we played the movie. Everybody watches the movie. They just, uh, it was fun. You know, like we, we went in there. Um, I played some football, like street football. The kids are playing tackle football on an ice road, just <laughs> slipping around. I'm like, man, you just get these kids some helmets, you know, and the snow machine helmet. They like, get concussed pretty good. I don't know. Like, they looked out after their own. They didn't bully the little kids. You know, they weren't mm -hmm. like, you know, poning the little kids like to the ice that they were playing. And like, hey, have you guys ever played 500? Who's 500? You know, I'm like, well, you got to catch it. I was like, whoever wins, like, I brought a bunch of, um, candy bars mm -hmm. out there like it's a dry village no alcohol they like their tobacco like i brought out some tobacco not for the kids but for like the cook mm -hmm. and the guide and they're like oh thank you very much you know yeah no problem just a little care package yeah a little care package and i actually come to think i think you can i mean we went to give it to them but now i'm like I, I don't i think you can do that with tobacco i mean nobody stopped me nobody said anything and they're all they didn't bring any cigarettes but they're all smoking i think that's i think that's Legal, but I know it's dry, so you can't bring alcohol. Uh -huh. So I may have just dry snitched on myself. I better, I better look into that one and publish it. But uh, like the kids, you know, like I brought a bunch of candy bars and like 
<laughs> brought him apples and produce and brought out like an entire two boxes of produce, right? And like he flew all this stuff down there. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, hey, whoever get you wins, I'll, I've got some apples. And they're like, <laughs> oh, like give me the oh, stickers. Yeah, like, yeah, I got some bubble gum. They're like, oh, bubble gum. Like, yeah, we'll play for that. I'm like, all right, whoever wins, you know. Mm-hmm. And then uh, nobody could catch this rock hard ball and throw bombs, you know, <laughs> like, like NFL football with the Duke. It's just frigid, you know. Maybe the 20 kids trying to catch you with gloves. I'm like, yeah, you all win. Like, here you go. You know, you're just, bubble gum and snickers bar and i just held it out kids yeah like did everybody get one and she's like, no not me i'm like it's cool i got you no snickers bar you know <laughs> hook the kids up and then like from then on they're all following me everywhere like hey you have any more i'm like ah, let's go to the store and buy something so like i brought gum and even like the neos like the, like the, the, the drink the flavored drink mm. I brought the drink yeah. for the adults and then like i caught the kids they were in there you know just taking squirts in their mouth i'm like no no don't do that and they're like oh no this is the good stuff mm-hmm. getting all hyped up i'm like oh yeah you know so that was really fun you know mm-hmm. like you come in and you could play santa claus for a little while um and that was that was to me the big part of the hunt and um i noticed a lot of the other groups of hunters they were like yeah most hunters don't come out they hang out and and james isn't the only outfit there's a couple others but um they just hang out and i feel like mm-hmm. just missing the whole hunt man that was what i took away from the hunt it wasn't like jumping on the snow machine and riding out into endless white and then finding musk ox and getting out and walking to it and shooting it, you know, mm-hmm. which was, that's, that's what happened. So like, I felt a sense of sadness killing the musk ox it was like, there's no way that I just spent $4,500, five grand to come out here and not shoot this musk ox. So on the last day of the hunt, I shot the musk ox, literally the last day we were flying out the next day, shot the musk ox. We sliced and diced it in record time with Derek and Ruby, threw it in the sled. We got back. And they're like, hey, the weather might be coming in. Can we fly out tonight? And I was like, I, I, you know, I still have so much work to do. Um, they're like, well, we're going to get out. I was like, well, see if they can take me too. And then we all got together on the phone while I was slicing and dicing. All right, can you get your stuff together? I'm like, I just need some help. When you get you guys get done packing, you slice and dice this musk ox and deboned it in record time. Mm-hmm. And I donated like the brisket and like half the neck, but I wanted to take the majority of the meat because it's like a Kobe beef of, you know, mm-hmm. so wild. So slice and dice, you putting it in in gallon bags or um, in totes. totes. Like I brought okay. totes stacked inside each gotcha. other, and then they had a big duffel, like this big uh, old like grain sack or something like that, and stuffed it down in there, like the whole hide and skin. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And like, all right, so here's Alaska way. Like I get done with the hunt, we fly out in record time, we get to Bethel, um, and they had planned properly and I was, we didn't weigh the totes or anything. We get there like, Hey, you can't do this. You can't do that. And like my musk ox was like three pounds over in the bag. And I'm like, Oh no, the meat and everything. I'm like, air cargo's closed. I can't get it out. I'm like, I'm flying out, but now I can't get my meat out and air cargo's closed. And like one of the gals, like, and it was like typical airline. Like it's come on. It's three pounds over, please. Can I pay over here? Like, nope, this is over the overage. You know, it's like 103 or something like that. Cut off is 100. And I'm like, I'm like, I was thinking about trying to cut off three pounds of hide or something. I'm like, I fleshed it. I'm like, oh, I don't even know how to get three pounds off of this. Like, freaking out. The line's there. I'm like, I'm going to miss the fl- I'm gonna miss the plane now, you know? Mm-hmm. Staying in Bethel now for overnight. They're getting on the plane. I'm like, oh my gosh, please. What can I do? And like, another, like a local came over. She's like, yeah, you call up this guy. He'll take care of it. No. Okay, but I literally, the air cargo guy was off work and uh, I called him and he's like, yeah, sure, I'll come by. And after hours, air cargo guy came and he's like, hey, it's closed, I can't get in there, but I'm like, I'm a, the shipper, like I'm, I'm the grunt in the back that takes care of everything, you know, and I don't know his job title. Um, his name is in my phone, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but uh, dude, he took like my, tr- my prized possession where I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Like he's got, he has everything. And this is so rare to get a musk ox. And like, I really just got to trust this guy out in the middle of nowhere. Never met him before. And, um, this is life. And this you- is life. And he comes up and he's got a group of other people in the vehicle. I'm like, this is the last time I see this musk ox, you know, thinking to myself. And, um, I had like a hundred dollars, like bartering left, you know, a hundred dollars. I'm like, here's a hundred bucks. He's like, Oh, I don't want that. I was like, no, just, just take this, please. And, and uh, I'll call my card number tomorrow. And 
And he's like, I don't, I don't, I don't feel great about this. I was like, please take it. Like it's already his hand. I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm backing away, backing away, backing away. And he's like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll be in touch, you know? And it just kind of like, it looked like he just felt bad. I'm like giving him money. And I kind of felt bad, but I'm like, what do I do? You know, in this situation. And so long story short, guy calls me the next day, gives me the, give him the card number and shipped it out. No problem. And, um, you know, the Alaskan way, this dude totally like got me out before the weather came in, before I was stuck in Bethel for another five days, you know, mm-hmm. got my musk ox out. It was in the freezer. It came in a couple of days later and it was like, wow, Alaska, I love you. You know, it's like you hear nightmares, but then you also hear of like, just, you know, dreams come true. So that was really cool. That was the hunt wrapped up. Uh, Ruby got her bowl first. Then I got mine. We got out of there blazing fashion. Um, and, um, you know, I filmed the whole thing, so that'll be, like, another film that I'm editing. But, um, you know, I, I'm kind of conflicted about even posting the kill shot because it's like, yeah, I walked up to shoot this thing, you know? Same thing with Ruby and, and hers, but hers was a little bit more climactic because he was charging us, and he gave us our, like, money's worth, yeah. you know? Um, he put it on the show. Yeah. So that, that, that'll that come out, um, and, and that's kind of, like, what's happening right now with... Uh, this time of year there's some goat hunting happening in kodiak um there's a lot of ice fishing right a lot of outdoor recreation snow uh, snow machining snowboarding uh cabin hauling getting stuff out to the cabins that's kind of like the pulse right now um and a lot of indoor stuff you know a lot of hockey a lot Mm -hmm. of you know thank god for football and big screen tvs um you know just winding down we're almost almost done with football and then what do you do yeah right (laughs) it's like oh well football's uh, dead and you're like yes permits come out then that's permit time yes permit time yes it's gonna happen february 15th like every year oh yeah just like taxes baby april 15th february 15th this is the it's christmas all over again oh yeah i've been i got a calendar and Do you checking them off? <laughs> I, I I try my best to forget about it. And... Uh-huh. I I have a uh, I have a couple of guys from back in Oregon that put in some non-resident tags with me. So and they like text me like every day. How many more days? How many more days? <laughs> like, dude, you're not helping. It's 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 like watching a you know pot trying to boil. It's not gonna happen if you keep asking about it. Right. That's what I usually do. I I just. Somebody usually call me or text me. Mm-hmm. And I'll get a few of them like, oh, okay, I drew this. And then I'll go and verify, see what my other buddies drew. But as far as the hunts go, I don't rely on that whatsoever. I've mm-hmm. already got my plans, you know, I already have plans set in place and time's blocked out. And I usually do it a year in advance. Who's up? What's happening on this hunt? Where we're we going? Like already mm-hmm. dialed in. Um, and so there's not as much like, hey, you free? Can you do this? Like, no, I'm sorry. Like, I, I want to go do every hunt, but um, I've, I've already got a hunt planned, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's that's how that kind of works. And then when, when, the, when the tags come out, you're like, oh, wow, pleasantly surprised. Like when I drew the musk up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that was sweet. So um, you never know. It might draw. You, can, you can't draw the tag the year after. Mm-hmm. And if you put in for that tag the year after you've drawn, it, like I believe it cancels out your entire your whole application. Your whole application. So, so there there is tricks with that. Like you've got to pay attention to the rules mm-hmm. and know a little something about putting in, right? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you just donated just expensive donation, you know, four hundred bucks. Which is the Alaskan draw is the earliest state, right? Mm-hmm. I believe that, so. That you could start putting it in, which end of october november i think november it 15th i believe it opens yeah or maybe a little bit after i'm not sure the exact date mm-hmm. it might change so every november year, and in november through middle of december is like the application period and the thing about alaska which is different than oregon that kind of stuff oregon montana colorado there's no point system right so it's every joe schmo's got the same chance as the next guy right it's completely random. Mm-hmm. It's just the random draw. Sometimes people draw, and I wonder. You know, uh-huh. you, know, like you drew the toke tag, and then the next year you drew the other toke tag mm-hmm. that's available. And then the next year you drew, like, you know. Well, there's all, hunt, there's yeah. all those conspiracies, right? Yeah. The, like, the, all right. the ADFG, the Alaska Fishing Game guys always get the best tags, right? Yeah, yeah but, so, like, you know, like, and I, I talk <laughs> to some of them, and they're like, yeah. 
we don't. There's, I wish there was a way to cheat the system, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm like, they, they don't get, yeah, this is completely random, mm-hmm. which is awesome, you know? And you hear other states of conspiracy theories, like, I've heard down in Idaho, it was like a bunch of people retiring, and I don't know if this is true <laughs> or not, like, I haven't verified because I don't spend very much time looking at political <laughs> stuff or negativity, you know, but apparently a bunch of them do the bighorn hunts, mm-hmm. and I've been putting in for Idaho for the bighorn hunts. So. I could get one ever, you know, <laughs> non-guided, I don't have 60 grand laying around, or Mm-hmm. whatever big horns cost so uh that's like the conspiracy theory fill your application out in red ink yeah submit it early you don't get attacked uh-huh. you know there's different uh just uh, I theories guess, and ideas and, and there's no ideas stuff. you look at the numbers uh, on like what's the percentage draw on them going to six choices and you know making 30 more bucks per animal mm-hmm. each each uh entry is five dollars, and I believe um, like muskox might and bison might be a little bit more. Yeah, I think those are a little bit more. Fifteen, 15 maybe. Yeah, and I, I'm, uh-huh. I'm not sure, um, but it might be a little bit more. Most of the, the generals, five each choice. A lot of people spread that out and be like, "Oh, I'll put in for this and this and this and this," and they're just gonna have a lower percentage chance is if they put in for one hunt, all six choices. Mm-hmm. It's like that's like kind of one of the the things that I go by. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- yeah, and th- there's that. Then, are you actually going to be able to go and do the hunt when if you get drawn? There's, mm-hmm. you know, there's all sorts of things that to go into the draw. Which I, I wish that I wish on some of those that oh I can't do that hunt. Then ADFG can like pick pick the next guy. You know, there, there's a second thing. Right. But there's not. Unfortunately. No, there's not. Even if you turn in your tag, because they are counting on as far as the allocation of animals. We talked about this with ADF and G and the biologists. So what's the deal with that? And they're like, well, we're actually counting on a fraction of those people not being able to go based on past reports. Mm-hmm. So for like, I'm trying to get it all sheep season extension for certain areas, you know? And they're like, well, you know, I know this is a tag and you'd, you'd like it to be open up the registration, but we're actually counting on people not going and doing it and leave some of those allocations on the table. Allocation mm-hmm. is a kill, you know? Mm-hmm. That's how they do it with goats. Um, with registration each area is open with a registration tag to let's say 10 goat units one unit is a billy two is a nanny once they hit that 10 they shut her down mm-hmm. that's an allocation is a unit um, of kills that each area can handle so uh, that's that's what they say they, they are taking into account that people aren't going to do the hunt from the very beginning at any rate um there's, there's all sorts of, the, of tricks to draw, and there's different permits, and there's registration permits, but the tricks to draw uh, um, and, and strategies that people use, like I've never been, I wasn't successful for a while, and I started putting in for uh, just time, just kept putting in, like the muskox, I do the muskox. Mm-hmm. Which some of those, I mean, it's all chance, mm-hmm. but there are things that you can do to help your odds putting in all six, like you yep. said. And ADFG puts out how many people put in for those tags, what your percentage of drawing it is. Mm-hmm. If you want to draw a tag, maybe not put in for the one that has less than 1%. You know? right. uh, maybe put in for the one that has 30 40%. Well, if you I know. drew the, the, the sheep tag right here, I'm looking at you know Pioneer Peak. I drew that tag for archery the very first years. This was 2010. Um, I drew that back when you had like, I don't think you had like 57% chance, 25 to 57% chance or something like that, like ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And then now it's just like the rest of them, you know, because it was archery, archery only. Mm-hmm. And so there wasn't as many people with, uh, you know, archery certification back then. Now a lot of people have it. A lot of people are putting in. It's like, well, that sucks. Mm-hmm. You know, you wish that archers, like in other states, archers get preference in certain hunts. They get to start before and they get to go after you know, and mm-hmm. they're like, okay, cool. They're not going to kill as much. Absolutely not. But um, they're, they're going to have, you know, some opportunity there, which is great. And that's, you know, how the archery season, you know, blossomed was be a two-season hunter. So you hunt with a bow, you hunt with a rifle, and you can hunt longer. Yeah, you uh, get and, more, more days in the field that way. Yeah, right? You know, in, in, in Alaska, it's, uh, you know, you go out and you're competing unless you're in an archery area. And some guys, like, you can go deep and, like, you know, there's always exception to everything. But if you go out to Unit 13 hunt a caribou with a bow, you're most likely, if there is a caribou within striking distance, from the trail, you know, from the four-wheeler trail, from your four-wheeler, 
Somebody's gonna be lobbing bullets, you know. Like somebody, you know, it's over, like out there, over your head, yeah, either. going after them, and they're like, nah, <laughs> they're gonna shoot over, you know, it's like it's ridiculous. You, you get a lot of complaints that way, like in different hunts, like hunt the hall road, you know, hunt the hall road, and then you got other archers like, oh, I'm gonna try to get ahead of these caribou over here. He spooks them, and they spook them the other way. Like, come on, guys! Like, so I wish there was more archery opportunity in Alaska, and that's you know, I sit. On the advisory committee board for the board of game board of fish there's 97 it's not really that prestigious it's just donating a good portion of your winner every wednesday night or thursday you have these meetings and you go and vote on proposals on regulation change and there's um there's some gentlemen on there that are pretty firm in their ways they don't want archers having a better opportunity than mm -hmm. the rifle hunters or more opportunity because they're going to kill all the game you know <laughs> all right guys cool you, you've got Look at the statistics on harvest with bow and arrow. It's, it's a fraction. Mm -hmm. As far as like doll sheep goes, I looked up the statistics and out of all the sheep killed in the state over the last 10 years, there is less than 1% of all the harvest that happens with the bow. Mm -hmm. you're like, yeah, these guys really put a dent in the population with the bull And those 1%, I bet 90% of the 1% are the same guys. You know? <laughs> exactly. <right? laughs> you got Jonah Stewart out there acing. You got Frank Noska out there uh -huh. acing them. And they're super cubs flying around and being bad boys, you know. Mm -hmm. That's just a couple of you know, Roy Roth, he was out there, he's doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. You got some guys that go out and do it, like, hey, man, you are you are badass. Mm -hmm. Troy Graziati committed to the bow, committed to trap bow, right? And hunted a lot of doll sheep, been on a lot, seen a lot of a lot of legal rams from what I've heard. Never never talked to him about it, but all of a sudden on Facebook, I'll see one every few years, boom, he's got a monster with his recurve. You're like, you're a badass, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's, what's that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at any rate, I, I'd like to get more archery opportunity in Alaska, but I digress. We're going back to the draws, there's not very much archery only in the draws. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. And like you said, even the archery only, like Chugiak and all that kind of stuff, are just as hard to draw now. <laughs> right. You know, the yep. base, the base moose hunt, all that kind of stuff. You know, they're all very slim chances yeah. but i think that's a great idea you know opening up some more opportunity for archers yeah and it's not like it's going to hurt that much game population no I mean, it's not going to put a dent in it especially for sheep where mm -hmm. the, the breeding population they've got to be eight double groomed full crow by angle like even to get there you're not going to hurt the breeding population so you're not damaging the population whatsoever uh and in, in, in hunting them um so you're not going to affect the population. There's no biological concern. Why not open it up? Extend the season for another 10 days. Give the guys with the bows a shot when the big boys come out of the crabs where nobody's shooting them anyways and they're dying of old age and come back, you know, they're coming down. Last 10 days of September, last, you know, end October, they're dropping down low to get to good feed. It's mm -hmm. a good opportunity to go get one with a bow, but you still have to get a bow. You still got to close the distance. You're not going to affect the breeding population. Anymore. Come on, open it up, guys. Mm -hmm. real. Come on, hook a brother up. Yeah. yeah. The opportunity to chase animals as residents with tags over the counter for free, baby. Mm -hmm. So, happens. Yeah. I, I, I love the first first time that I got some tags here. Mm -hmm. uh, in Oregon, you have to pay for each one individually. Bah, bah, bah. The mm -hmm. lady just hands me this packet of tags. <laughs> like, I can go hunt all these things at if I wanted, I have black bear tags. Sweet, you know, <laughs> I have black bear tags, moose tags, wolf tags. I mean, everything yeah. is load you up. <laughs> like, go have fun, little fella. Alaska's like, thank you for living here. You know, uh -huh. dealing with the winters and the darkness for three sixty five. So that's worth it for sure. Um, it's definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. Live here in Alaska. That's why I left and got back as quick as I could. You know.